there are in the cities, towns, and suburbs of America. Along streets named Maine and Elm and Jefferson, a mystery that seems almost impossible to solve. Along these streets are businesses of countless kinds, companies of all sizes and shapes, each a dream someone has made real. Here is the heartbeat of America, enterprise, freely practiced, vigorous and alive with promise. But along these streets there is a mystery, and the mystery here is this. Why is it that one business will survive and prosper, and yet another, subject to the same pressures, will fail? Both might well achieve excellence in the quality of their product or service. Both may market their products or services with skill. Both may manage their organization with intelligence and plan thoroughly for the future. But one will succeed, the other will fail. Both seem to do everything right, yet for one, everything goes wrong. Certainly luck is involved, but more often than not, the difference between success and failure has to do with money. Having the right amount of money at the right time to make the right business move. The successful business person knows where to get capital, which sources are most advantageous, and how to spend it where it will have the most advantageous effect. Well, it's been a while since we met the last time. Have you prepared the financial statement that I had? Quite often we think money is something that happens at the end of the process, an end product of business. But those businesses that endure and prosper know better. They know that a continuous flow of capital is the lifeblood of the organization, that it is the primary difference between success and failure. Bob, I appreciate you coming by. I appreciate the opportunity to do business with you. All right. There is no mystery along Main Street when money is wisely obtained and judiciously applied to need. Managing finances is as critical as managing production, people, or marketing the product. Hello, I'm Alex Burton, and this is The Business File. Oscar Wilde once had this to say about money. When I was young, I thought money was the most important thing in the world. Now that I'm older, I know that it is. Well, our program today is called Managing Short-Term Financial Resources. But before we get into short-term finance, we want to take a look at the big picture, finance in general, and the importance of financial management in business. And we will travel to Texas, California, and Michigan to visit a number of people deeply involved in the financial world. First, we are in Los Angeles at the University of Southern California to talk with Joseph Vinsel, who is Associate Professor of Finance and Business Economics at the School of Business Administration. Professor Vinso, we are glad to be here today, and we're looking forward to this discussion. Thanks, Alex. I'm glad to be here, too. Let us plan on channeling our discussion from funding in general to short-term funding specifically. And let me begin with this comment and question. Now, we know that business has a continuing need for capital, but I am not sure I understand when that need is greatest. Is it when times are good or when business conditions are not so good? Well, interestingly enough, you have uh, the need for funds in all kinds of business conditions. As an economy expands, sales expand, uh, but unfortunately, when you make a sale, doesn't mean that necessarily that you get the cash. So you're going to, if you're going to have expanding sales, you're going to have an expanding need for cash until your cash starts coming in. With expanding sales, you also will have the need for expanding uh, your plant and equipment, because as you see these expanding sales, you say, well, we want more of this, and so let's have uh, a larger plant, more equipment, and so you're going to need funds to invest in that. Well, as the expansion continues, you will have this expanded need for sales, but eventually it'll peak out, and then we start coming down into what's called a recession. Unfortunately, your need for funds does not end in a recession, but in fact will accelerate because now you're not increasing your sales, but you are finding that your inventory is expanding because you're not providing the sales, and you're going to need to finance that. Likewise, your customers are getting slower and slower in paying their bills, and so therefore you're going to have to finance uh, your accounts receivable. And so in expansions, 
in contractions or even steady periods, you're going to have this increased need for funds. I see what you mean by constant need regardless of business conditions, but what are some specific needs for capital that most businesses share? Well, a business needs cash to pay its bills, to take advantage of opportunities. For example, uh, in many times you will be given a 2% discount if you pay within 10 days. You need cash to be able to take care of those uh, opportunities. You need cash to acquire inventory. You need cash to acquire platinum equipment. You need cash to buy another business if you're going to be buying another business. If you're going to be merging, you will need funds for all of those activities and uh, the extent to which you are involved in any of those will determine the amount of cash and, and funds that you're going to need. From research for this program, I understand that there are two basic sources of funds for business, short term and long term. Now, would you explain them, please? Short term funding is essentially uh, greasing the wheels of the business. The long term funds are used to acquire plant equipment, those things that will generate uh, larger and uh, more efficient sales. Later in this program, Professor Vinso, we're going to visit two chief financial officers. Now, in view of what you've been telling us about a business's need for funds, what is the role of the financial manager in this whole picture? I can tell it to you in one sentence. It's making sure that funds are available where you need them, when you need them, in the amount you need. Now, that sounds simple, but in fact, it's a rather complex process. But that's basically what financial management is about. Well, before we get into these complexities, I'd like to interrupt our conversation for a moment. There's some background information we've prepared to set the stage. We have a general idea why companies need funds and a general idea where those funds can be obtained. The important thing is, however, matching the need and the source, as we will see in the following piece. Every company, if it's to survive and prosper, must obtain periodic infusions of capital. The specific needs for capital are as varied and wide-ranging as are the priorities of the companies. But among these needs are to purchase assets such as equipment and facilities, to pay operating expenses, to build cash reserves, meet unexpected expenses, and to produce income. Some of these needs are short-term needs, others are long-term needs. A short-term need might be the repayment of a note or the need to make a payroll. The business simply needs a temporary shot in the arm. A long-term need might be funding for a new production plant or expanded facility. Generally, long-term needs require larger quantities of capital. Once a need is identified, a business must then seek to match that need with a source for the funds. Various sources include bonds, long-term loans, short-term loans, stocks, and factoring companies. This matching of need and source is a decision-making process which is the same for every organization, regardless of its size or nature. It is a universal process involving seven basic steps. Step one, determine the overall needs of the organization. Let's say the company identifies a need to increase productive capacity. There's a need to build a new facility. Step two, convert needs into specific amounts of financing. Cost of the new production facility, $500,000. Step three, once the company has calculated the cost, it is time to identify potential sources where the funds might be obtained. Step four, analyze each source to determine its suitability to the overall financial situation. Some of the factors to be considered in this analysis are is the need long-term or short-term? What is the cost of the funds balanced against the benefits? What are the tax implications? How much risk is involved? Step five, match sources to specific needs of the company. In this hypothetical case, the company determined its best source of funding to finance its new production facility would be a commercial loan. Other considerations were to sell stock, but this option was too uncertain. On the other hand, the interest payments on the commercial loan had tax advantages. The bank was also an excellent source in terms of availability. 
Step 6. Acquire the funds. And Step 7. Establish systems to monitor and control the expenditure of the funds. The effective expenditure of funds is every bit as important as their effective acquisition. Professor Vinso, we've just seen this animated piece on the decision-making process in regard to acquiring and managing funds. But in the real world, does this kind of decision-making model really exist? Oh, absolutely. And as a matter of fact, if a company does not do that, they will find themselves in deep trouble. It's important to know where are you going to be uh, needing your funds? How much are you going to be investing in plant and equipment? How much are you going to be needing in terms of current assets? Once you know that, then how are you going to raise that money? Is it something that's going to be a permanent need? Or is it something that's only going to be for a short period of time? You need to know that because otherwise you will make wrong decisions. You may go out and, and commit yourself to long-range costs of funds when you only need them for a year or two. Or, as many companies found out, they said, well, this is going to be transitory, so they got themselves into a pattern of borrowing uh, short-term, a year or two years, and short-term turned into eight and ten years with all of the escalation and in interest rates, which have caused uh, uh, significant problems. All those, if you don't plan and you don't know where the funds are coming from and where they're going to go, is going to cause you a lot of problems. So far, we've been discussing funding in general, the need for it, and the fact that it must be managed. Let's spend some time now on short-term funding, the major topic for this program. What needs does it specifically fill? What you will find is that in any organization, cash will flow in and cash will flow out. Unfortunately, the inflow doesn't always match the outflow. When you need it, where you need it, and in the amounts you need. Short-term funding is to allow us to uh, take these hills and valleys and to provide funds when they're needed to uh, accomplish this short-term uh, mismatching, if you will, of funds. If you don't mind, let's be even a bit more specific. In addition to filling in these hills and valleys, what other short-term needs are there? Well, for one thing, you need to acquire inventory. Uh, you can't produce, you can't sell, unless you have raw materials and work in process. On credit. Unfortunately, the workers and your suppliers will not wait until those accounts receivable come in, and so therefore you're going to have to pay your suppliers before you get the cash. And so you're going to have to uh, obtain these funds in order to, these funds in order to, uh, allow you to, to take care of this until uh, the accounts receivable come in. Now that I know what the specific needs are, where can I go to get short-term funds? Probably the best place to look is your own suppliers. It's called trade credit. Uh, suppliers will provide you goods and services and will then allow you to pay for them after a certain period of time. Uh, that's usually your best source, and by the way, it's probably the cheapest. If that isn't sufficient, then you need to look at short-term borrowing. That will be banks, the primary source. Uh, could be commercial paper. Uh, that's typically larger companies, but the commercial paper market is a, is a good one. Um, you may be required to pledge certain assets, such as inventory, against a loan. Uh, you may be required to pledge accounts receivable against the loan, uh, but those are the primary sources of short-term funds. Professor Vinso, it's been good visiting with you. Your information will be very useful. Thanks for letting us come by. Well, thank you, Alex. I enjoyed being here, too. We've talked with Professor Vinso about how a business person might or could deal with problems of acquiring or managing funds. Now we'll visit two corporate financial managers who deal with these important matters day by day. First, in Addison, Texas, we will talk with Paul Nichols, Vice President of Finance of Quality Components Corporation, a fast-growing wholesaler of electronic parts. We are also at Chrysler Corporation in Detroit to talk with Steve Miller, Chief Financial Officer and member of Chrysler's Board of Directors. Mr. Miller carries the official title of Executive Vice President of Finance and Administration. Thank you, Mr. Miller, for allowing us to come by. Well, Alex, thank you for coming. 
And it's good to be with you, Mr. Nichols. My pleasure. I'm glad to have you here. Let's begin with you, Mr. Nichols. Why do you need short-term infusions of capital at quality components? Well, we there are a number of reasons, Alex, that we would utilize and need short-term financing here, uh, some of which are very diverse. It might be as simple as needing money to pay off uh, tax uh, liability or pay dividends to the stockholders. Uh, we might need it to expand the business from the standpoint of uh, being able to bridge the early phases and the latter phases of that expansion. Uh, we might want to look at an extraordinary situation, for example, if I had an opportunity, uh, let's say, to go out right now today and, and to acquire um, a rather large or sizable quantity of inventory that I could turn very quickly back to cash uh, through the normal um, cycle that goes from cash to inventory to sales or a receivable and then back to cash again. If I get that cycle to turn very quickly and it's a, it's a major deal and it looks like it would be very profitable for us, I'd certainly want to entertain that. Uh, we might want to use that to bridge, uh, for example, let's say I'm anticipating uh, long-term or short-term financing needs. And I think that the, uh, the environment out in the marketplace right now is maybe not as good as it's going to be 60, 90 days down the road. I might use those short-term funds to bridge that time period so that I can get from point A to point B and thereby realize a more uh, uh, equitable or at least a better deal for a corporation in the long run. Let me ask you the same question, Mr. Miller. Well, to answer your question about why we need short-term infusions of capital at Chrysler, we really have to talk about Chrysler having two different kinds of businesses. The one business is the factory which builds and sells cars and trucks day by day, and the other is really a bank. It is the Chrysler Financial Corporation, and this bank provides today about $6 billion in total of loans to our dealers so that they can keep a stock of cars to sell at the dealership, and also to our retail customers. These are typically four-year car loans that the individual buyer of a car would want to have to finance his purchase. Now, we have two very different kinds of short-term needs when we consider the factory on the one hand and the, the bank, the Chrysler Financial Corporation, on the other hand. The factory typically does not need money every day usually carries cash for its own needs and only needs a rainy day fund in case there's a disruption in the production rate and therefore the cash coming in that might be caused by new model changeover, by some manufacturing problem in one of the plants, or by a labor dispute. So we need a rainy day fund. On the other hand, at Chrysler Financial Corporation, we need short-term money every day. Mr. Nichols, when you need short-term funds at quality components, where do you look? What sources do you use? Alex, there are a number of potential sources that we would use. Uh, some of those would be internal to the business, others external. The internal ones, obviously, we have control over. Uh, among those, obviously, as a good starting place would be trade credit. Uh, utilize that to the extent possible. Uh, we might uh, forego discounts, for example, that we otherwise would take, keep the funds in the business longer. Uh, we would probably want to do things like speeding up our receivables uh, to the extent possible there, putting extra effort into that so that money turns quicker for us. Uh, push out our payables. Might take somebody who is currently being paid at 30 days or 45 days and move them out to 45 or 60. Uh, also, uh, to the extent possible, I might try to uh, rotate inventories that we have on the shelves that are not moving back to the uh, suppliers. Uh, we ought to buy us about 60 days' worth of money utilization in doing that. Uh, external to the business, those areas that we would try to look at would be negotiating a working capital loan with a local bank or a commercial credit uh, corporation. Back to you, Mr. Miller. Knowing that you have two businesses under the Chrysler label, what sources of capital do you use to solve the problem of short-term funding for the factory? Well, the first thing that we do... Uh, all auto companies do is to carry a large amount of cash relative to other kinds of businesses. We today have about two billion dollars of cash and marketable securities and that's our cushion. It's the biggest we've ever had in our history. Uh, it gives us some comfort at this time. But it's probably a little higher than we'd ordinarily like to run. In order to meet short-term needs then you need other sources of cash that you can put your hands on in a short time. And one of the things that we did just recently was to sign up with a group of 70 of the world's leading banks 
for a credit line facility of over a billion dollars. And what that means is that we have, by contract, the right to ask them to loan us for short-term needs uh, over a billion dollars. And that means that even if our cash should run out through one of these short-term problems, we can now go out and get the money from the banks that we need to tide us over a, excuse me, a particular short-term need. How about the other arm of Chrysler, Mr. Miller? What about solving the financial corporation's short-term need? Well, they have a, a need for cash that varies day by day as well, depending on whether stocks are building at the dealers or being run off and whether customers are buying or have gone out of the market. In order to meet their short-term need, uh, they are in the market every day for short-term money, and it's in the commercial paper market. And commercial paper is a, a very short-term loan of about uh, 30 to 60 days on average. Uh, but it's there every day, and Chrysler Financial has about $2 billion of commercial paper outstanding at any point in time. Mr. Nichols, let's say you've determined a need for short-term funding, and further, you identified a cafeteria of sources where that funding might be obtained. What factors would influence your decision among the various sources? Well, there are a lot of factors, Alex, that we would consider. Uh, some of them more important, obviously, than others. But among those would be things such as uh, the amount that is needed, the length of time we're going to need it, uh, the effect it's going to have on our financial ratios, uh, whether it be positive or negative on a short-term basis. Uh, we would look at the availability of funds uh, relative to our requirements for those funds. Uh, we'd want to look at the return on that investment. Uh, there should be, obviously, a good economic reason for going out and borrowing funds. Uh, you would expect to see what the economic results of that would be to the corporation. Uh, and it should be beneficial, obviously. Uh, we might want to look, uh, for example, uh, as a very important factor that would influence that decision, the tax consequences uh, of what we're doing to the corporation. Uh, we would want to look at uh, the effects of the debt, just the carrying costs on the debt. What kind of impact is it going to have on our operating results uh, as well as our balance sheet? Uh, those would be key considerations we'd want to look at. Mr. Miller, you've talked about the reasons why Chrysler needs short-term funding, and we've discussed some of the sources where that funding can be obtained. But what factors do you consider when choosing among those sources? Uh, there, there's a couple of considerations we have when we're, when we're looking at short-term funds. One of the considerations is cost of money, how much you're going to pay in interest for that money every day that you have it. And the other consideration is assurance of availability, making sure it's going to be there when you want it. And now when we look at the factory and the bank, uh, we have two different considerations. The, the factory doesn't need money on an everyday basis. It's only when once a year or so when there's a disruption that you need to dip into the rainy day fund. And there, you're, so because you're not using it every day, you're not so concerned with the absolute interest cost on that money. You're more concerned with the assurance of availability. If you run into a strike or a production disruption and you still have to meet the payroll and pay your suppliers, you want to know the money's there. And that leads us to go to the banks, and we have a credit agreement with 70 of the world's leading banks. And by contract, we can borrow money from those banks on an overnight uh, basis. Uh, and we pay a little more than you might pay in the commercial paper market, but at least you know it's there. You're not dependent on an uncertain market condition. You have a contractual right to that money. In other words, when you're talking about the factory operation, the availability of the money is more important than its cost. Okay. What about the Chrysler Financial Corporation? At the Chrysler Financial Corporation, the important consideration there is the cost of funds because you know you're going to be in the market every day borrowing the money. And we have about $2 billion outstanding. So just a few basis points of interest difference makes a lot of difference to us. And the cheapest form of money is commercial paper. And so we, are, we borrow that commercial paper. We're in it uh, every day in that market, borrowing all the time. And, and our primary consideration there is to get the lowest cost of funds so that we, in turn, can charge a lower rate of interest to our dealers and customers, and that helps us sell cars. Our time is growing short, gentlemen, but it's been a pleasure talking with you today, a very interesting session. 
Mr. Nichols, thank you. My pleasure. I've enjoyed it very much, Alex. In fact, it's been very stimulating for me also. And thank you, Mr. Miller. Well, Alex, thank you very much. As a journalist, I've been involved in business and finance stories well, for more years than I'd care to recount. But one thing this program has reinforced is how absolutely vital finance is in managing a business. Financial resources must be managed. Short and long-range financial plans must be created. Needs must be properly assessed in advance, and sources of funds to meet those needs must be identified. And without this process, this decision-making model, a company cannot long prosper or even survive. Until next time, this is Alex Burton, and this has been The Business File. The preceding program is part of a college credit course.